In many React projects, you may see components that are nested inside other components. What's this all about? This is what I like to call component nesting, and to learn how this works, we must take a look at a special prop in React known as children. Imagine a scenario where we needed to have one component be made up of one or more other components. If we wanted to, we could hard code these components into our code. For example, if we have a card section component that is made up of card components, we could hard code, let's say, three cards into our card section, save the page, and now we have three cards on our page. This method works, but because we're hard coding this into our card section definition, we can never have any more or less than three cards. There's actually a better way to do this, where we can make the behavior of this component dynamic so that one card section may have two cards, another may have five, or another may have a hundred. This method involves using the children prop. If you're familiar with props, you know that they provide us a way to customize our components when we render them. And there is actually a reserve prop in React called children with a lowercase c. This children prop has special behavior compared with other props and allows us to dynamically render components inside other components. Here's how it works. First, we need to specify props.children in the component that will be the parents of the children components. In our example, card section is the parent component and card is the child component. So we should define props.children in the parent component, which is this one here. To do that, all we need to do is just type props.children, just like that. If you're using the default style of props, you can specify a props argument in your component right here. And then when you want to access a props called children, you can just write props.children. However, I am a huge fan of props destructuring. So I'm actually going to go ahead and destructure this children here so that we can remove this props dot and we can just render in the children prop like this. Instead of specifying three cards to render in this component, we instead replace these three cards with a prop just called children. Make sure it's spelled exactly like this because React recognizes this specific prop. Now let's go into our app.jsx file where we're actually rendering our card section component. Normally, whenever we specify props, we can write the name of the prop inside the component tag and then set it equal to something. For example, if I wanted a prop called color, I could just write color equals curly brackets and then put something inside these brackets. The children prop works differently though. Instead of specifying a prop called children, we need to instead take the parent component and then break it into opening and closing tags rather than just having it as one tag. Here's where the interesting part comes in. Now anything we put between this opening tag and this closing tag will be stored in a props called children. So let's render a card in between the opening and closing tags. This card is now a child of card section and is stored in card sections child prop. If I now save this page, you can see we have a card on our page now. If I take this card and paste it two more times and save it, you can see we now have three cards on our page because now these three cards are all the children of card section. Meaning, if I hop over to my card section component here, this children prop that you see is equal to all three cards that we have rendered. This children prop here in this file is just saying, render all these components children. And of course, we specify children by putting them in between an open and closing tag in the parent. Now that we're defining the children components when we render the parent, instead of in the parent definition itself, we are able to make our parent much more flexible. So before, if I had just gone into card section and I had specified card like this, then every single time we render in card section, we would always have a fixed number of cards. But now if we wanted to render multiple card sections and have each of them behave differently, we could do that. So this card section has three cards. We can make one that has three. We can make one that just has one card. And we can make another one that has, let's say, five cards. Now this looks a little ugly here, but go ahead and save this. And you can see that we now have three different card sections that each have a different number of cards inside of them because we have specified a different number of children in each one and the children prop behaves dynamically. The idea behind the children prop is that in normal JSX or HTML, we are often nesting tags. Like for instance, we might have, let's say a div tag. And then inside of that div, we could have a P tag and inside of that have an IMG tag or just do some nesting like this. What the children prop does is allows us to follow this same concept of nesting, but instead of doing it with just JSX elements, we can now do it with actual React components. As a best practice, you'll normally wanna keep children all of the same type, but you don't have to if you don't want to. So for example, let's say I have a card component and a button component and a text box component. I could render in card and then render in button and then render in text box. And now these are all three different components. Despite all three of them being different components, they are all still valid children of card section and will display accordingly. We also don't even have to have components as children. We could just have raw JSX. If instead I wanted to have a raw input field instead of just a button and text box component here, I could replace this with input like this, save it, and you can see that it renders out just fine. 
If you want to keep your code more reacty, it's generally best to have your children be React components. But if for some reason you didn't want to do that, the option is there to just inject some raw JSX. And that's going to wrap up this short video on the children prop. I hope this helps your understanding and allows you to do some more creative things in React that you maybe couldn't do before. Thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day.